What's up, Wayne Barron here with Dark Effect Studios, and today we're going to be working in Tet. And so what we got here is that we got a Linksys, uh, what is it? It's a Linksys WRT120N router, and we got a Windstream SageCom Fast4320 with a bonded internet. What bonded internet means is that they take two lines to create one single stream. So I've got a 50 meg download and an 8 meg upload. So 25 and 4 on each line gives me the 50 and the 8 upload. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to bridge these two together. The Windstream modem does not keep my settings. If the power goes down uh, during a storm or whatever, I've got a backup, but my backup only lasts for about uh, an hour, and then it drops. So once it drops and it comes back on, if I do not remember to upload my configuration file, then my mail server is offline. So I don't know why it does that. Every Windstream modem that I have used over the course of eight years now being with Windstream, has all lost the configuration. Every single time I've got to go in and either re-upload the config file or go in there and manually enter all of the IP addresses for the POP and the SMTP and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge this modem with the Linksys and I'm going to make it so that I don't have to worry about this crap no more. As long as whenever the power drops it doesn't lose the bridge. If it loses the bridge, then me and Windstream is going to have a nice little chat. So that's what we're going to be doing. So let's jump into it. Okay, I am inside of the modem interface for the Windstream modem. And this right here is my Linksys router interface. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to come over here to our modem. We're going to go through some settings. We need to come over here to our wireless and we need to disable our wireless. So it says enable wireless. We want to uncheck that and then we want to apply and save. So anybody that is connected onto the internet right now with wireless has just lost their ability to connect onto the system. Now we need to come over here to the events setup and then we're going to come over here to auto detection. We want to disable auto detection. And it says disable auto detection will remove all current PVCs. Are you sure? Click OK. Okay, come over here and click on layer 2 interface and then choose ATM interface. And now click on the add. Okay, for the VPI, we want to set that at 0, 35 for this one. And then our path is going to be 0. And then we want to put a check right here for path one and then come down to the EO radio button and check that. Then for the encapsulation mode, we want to leave it here. You got a drop down, so it's going to leave it as default. Default Q weight, we want to set that as one. And then the next one is going to be set as eight. This one's going to be one and this one's going to be eight. So let's go ahead and apply these settings. And this right here should be setting about like so. Okay, next let's come down to the PTM interface. Click on add. Put a check on the path zero and the path one. And then make sure there's a one and an eight. And this one should be blank and a 3000 on this one. Click apply and save. And then it should look like this. Okay, now let's come down to our DSL bonding. And mine is set at X DSL bonding compatibility. So we're going to leave that alone. We're not going to do anything. And then, uh, but if yours does not have this, then you need to leave it alone as well. So it either does or does not. And this is what I was explaining before. If it, uh, if this is unchecked, then this right here is only going to be 25,000 uh, and around 4,800 right here so basically 25 megs down four megs up with this right here with bonding we've got 50 megs down and eight megs up uh, actually it's nine megs let's come over here to our wan service click on add 
select PTM from the drop down menu and then click on next. And then once we get here, we're going to choose bridging and then click on next, then click on apply and save. And then it should look something like this right here. Okay, so now the next thing that we want to do is we want to come down here to management. Okay, and we're going to back up our settings. So click here. We're going to choose our D drive. Come down here to networking, our router. And this is our bridge config. Let's go ahead and save that. So this right here is my backup with my original settings. So if anything happens at all, then I can actually upload this backup to get my system back up and running. Saving this configuration, uh, let's just say that I have to go back to this state to do whatever, then I can always upload this one right here so I don't have to go through all the settings again. Let's go ahead and click on save. All right, and so the next thing that we need to do is uh, reboot the modem for all the changes to take effect. Okay, so we are back up now, and the only thing that we need to do here is go inside of our... Okay, so what we want to do next is we need to change our IP address. We're going to come down here to our LAN, change this to a 3, because right now, currently, this is set up with a 1. So then we're going to leave this as a 3.1, so if I ever need to access this, it's going to be a 3.1. Click on Apply. Then we can log back into the system. So this right here is now set up with our uh, dot .3.1 interface. So now the only thing we got to do is come over here. And then we got to set up everything for this part of it. Now I've got everything set for my wireless for manual. So you can take a look at this. I've got uh, manual for mixed. I got it named. And then I got it set for auto 20 hertz or 40 hertz enabled. And then we come over here to wireless security. And then we got it set at WPA2 personal and AE3. And then uh, my password. And then it's key re renewal at 3600. Not really sure what the key renewal, it, renewal is. Okay, I had originally set this thing on manual. However, the only system that would log in via Wi-Fi was my Lenovo laptop. None of the other devices, cell phones, the only way that they could actually connect was using this right here. If you look on the back of your Linksys router, you will see this little symbol and you will see an eight digit code right beside it. You would choose that eight digit code and you would give that to your uh, client so that they will enter that in order to connect on to the network. And so this right here has to be set up, but all these other stay the same. So right here, all this information right here stayed the same. It kept my SID name as well. So everything stayed. It's just that I had to use the Wi-Fi protected setup. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to setup. I'm going to set this at PPOE. So our username and password, and we've got that. We're going to go ahead and type that in here. Okay, so once again, come over here, set that to 2. And then set that to 2. Gonna come down here and change this to Eastern, wherever it is, right there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and save these settings. Click on save. Okay, we're gonna change this right here to two and leave that and then change that one and then click on OK choose yes click OK again all right and now we should be able to come over here and log back on 
save okay and so everything is set up now okay so we've got our uh, windstream modem right here and then we've got our Linksys router right here so what we're gonna do is that we need to swap some cables around and add in a cable so this right here is going to let's go ahead and take a look down here I'll show you exactly what that is going to that is going to there all right now we're going to connect this into number four and then we're going to take this blue one right here and then we're going to bring this out of the WAN and then we're going to plug this in to the internet so that's going to go in right here okay and so if things go right let's come over here minimize this we should be able to go on to Google and voila we are on Google so we can actually check our mail so we are online so let's go ahead and um, resume our recording over here so that we can actually we're going to do a speed test and now let's come over here to Atlanta Georgia and let it go ahead and start and we should have 50 uh, it's only it's only picking up half okay well we're getting all of our upload we're just not getting our download change right here I had to change that to a two and a two for there and once I changed that and then I disabled and then re-enabled my card again I was able to come over here and do a speed test and it actually gave me the speed that I was supposed to get which as you can see right there is hitting about 50 megs all right and I've got 50 megs down and nine megs up so uh not bad all right well this is wayne baron with dark effects studios i hope that this helps y'all out whenever y'all want to bridge and get away from using the crappy firmware inside of these windstream modems they suck all right y'all have a good one now bye bye